Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a textured brush all in Photoshop. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop and I've created a new document. And the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the layers panel and from the bottom, add a new layer and I'm going to double click on the text layer one and I'm just going to call this texture and next select the brush tool from the toolbar on the left and from the drop down up here you can click on the arrow and it will show you all of your brushes now Photoshop comes with some really cool brushes by default and you can also download loads of awesome brushes and install these into Photoshop. In fact, many of these ones here, I'll link those on a card to another video. You can download them directly from Adobe. They're an awesome set of brushes and I would definitely recommend them if you're looking to get more creative in Photoshop. But for now, if we go down, we're going to pick this one here, Airbrushed Soft High Density Grainy. That is a mouthful, but we'll select that one anyway. And you can see it looks something like this. Now, when we talk about texture, a lot of brushes, especially the ones that I've just shown you, will come with some texture. So if I brush very lightly, you can see that this brush does indeed have texture on it. But the kind of texture that I'm talking about and that we're going to be learning in this tutorial is if I keep brushing on the same spot with any brush, eventually, regardless of how much texture the brush might appear to have, it will become a solid color. And it's this solid color that we're going to be applying the texture to. So this is black at the moment, so we'll just erase that really quickly. There we go. And we'll grab the brush tool again, and we're now going to click on the color picker, and we'll change this from black to, well, we'll go for a light, yellowy orange kind of like a gold color sort of but not beige maybe it doesn't really matter because we're going to be doing it with some other colors in a moment but just pick a color you like we'll go with something like this and then what we can do is we can brush something like that and you can of course adjust the size of your brush using the left and right square brackets on the keyboard and if you're wondering what on earth is going on with my mouse cursor you can see it moving all around that is because i've got a wacom tablet installed and it does calculate the angle that my tablet pen is pointing and if you'd like to learn more about wacom tablets and how awesome they are there's a link in the description to the one i'm using it's a wacom intuos pro i love it it's amazing but it's there if you'd like to check it out so remember left and right square brackets to adjust the size of the brush so we'll make that a bit bigger and just zoom in so we need to add some texture to this so what we can do is right click on our texture layer and go to blending options and I'll just move this out the way so you can see the effect now we're going to go down to pattern overlay and you'll see a screen that looks like this and we can click on this drop down here and well, by default, we get a few of these and we can click on them. And I mean, they're, they're kind of useful. I think a lot of these are recent patterns that I've been using. So you may see these, you may have fewer, you may have a completely different set. Regardless, that's absolutely fine. Just click the cog icon and you can see we get all of these as standard with Photoshop. So there's lots to play around with here. Or you can go and load your own patterns if you want, or you can just reset them back to the default. But the ones we're going to focus on for this tutorial is Artist Surfaces. So we'll click that. Now Append means that it will add this new set of artistic surfaces to any patterns that are already here. Or if you click OK, it will just replace all of these with the artistic surfaces. So let's just go and replace those. And these are all of them here. And of course you can click through and you get lots of different types of surfaces. Now don't worry at the moment that they are uh, very, very dark because we can adjust that in a moment. So to get a really nice texture, I'm going to go for something like this. So it's not too obvious and it's quite subtle, but you can of course change it at any time. Now the blend mode is set to multiply. If we change that to normal, it will just show us the pattern as it appears in the thumbnail here. So it's just a white background with a grayish pattern. If we change it to multiply, it blends that pattern onto our color. So the lighter areas of the pattern, the white are removed. Or we could 
get even more creative and change it to something like pin light, which then takes the color from our layer and then works that into the texture. And of course, you know, we could go on forever. There's lots and lots of experimentation and fun to be had here. But we'll leave that at multiply because that blends the texture really nicely onto our color. Now you can adjust the opacity of the texture. So if I take it down to zero, you can see that the texture disappears entirely. And we can just bring this up slowly. And if you look carefully, you can see the texture becomes more and more prominent. So we could go for about 70%. Now we've got the scale here as well. This is the physical size of the texture. So at 100%, it looks great. If I take it up beyond that, of course, it is going to start to pixelate. So just be mindful of that. But you can take it smaller. If you'd like the texture to be a little bit finer, then you can go a bit smaller. If you go too small, of course, it will pretty much disappear. But that is the scale as well. And once you've adjusted the opacity and the scale, you can, of course, go in and try some other textures. So we could pick something slightly different and just bring that down. So depending on the texture, you may need to adjust these properties accordingly. But let's go back to this one. And when you're happy, you can turn on preview if you'd like to see it, if it's not already checked and click OK. Now, the beauty of doing this is that that pattern is listed here as an effect. We can turn it on and off. Or we can right click and go back to blending options and go and edit it. It's all still there. So this is fantastic. But the even better thing, the amazing thing is that because this pattern overlay effect applies to this layer, anything else that goes on this layer is going to instantly have that effect. So if we want to continue brushing now, you can see that anything we brush on this layer also has that nice texture to it. And we can even go and change the color. So let's go for a blue. And if I zoom in, you can see it has that texture. And as I said, we can go back into the blending options and we could whack that up to 100% just to make that texture more visible. And we could go and pick another color and brushing with that, we could use different brushes from up here. We could do anything. As long as we've got this pattern overlay effect applied to that layer, whatever is on that layer will have that texture. And there we go. That's how to create a texture brush in Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take double-handed. Take care, and I'll see you next time.